observed Nanda Maharaj gathering different paraphernalia to perform a ritualistic ceremony. So Lord Krishna inquired from Nanda Maharaj, what was he doing? He wanted to know, what is this, Baba? Is this something in the Shastra or is this some r tradition? There are these two sides, right? Some things are traditional, you know, the family do it, it's a custom, and other things are Shastrik. So Lord Krishna wanted to know what was happening. Of course, Lord Krishna knew very well what was happening, but he wanted that in Vrindavan, particularly with his unalloyed devotees like Nanda Maharaj and his associates, that these are all Lord Krishna's eternal devotees. And Lord Krishna doesn't want to see them engaging in worship of demigods or ritualistic activities, which we might call karmakandi activities, fruitive activities. Lord Krishna wants to see his devotees engaged in bhakti, pure unalloyed devotion. So he asked his father, what's happening? So Nanda Maharaj is thinking, initially he's thinking, you know, Krishna is just my son, he's only a small child, what can he understand? So he was reluctant to explain much to him, but Lord Krishna persevered and he impressed his father in his genuine desire to understand. Lord Krishna told his father that if one does things without knowing what he's doing, then you don't get much benefit from it. You get some benefit, but not much. If you know what you're doing, then it will be much more beneficial. So Nanda Maharaj told Lord Krishna that this is our custom that we have to do our Indra Yagya because we are Vaishyas and we depend on Lord Indra to provide rain and with good rain there will be good grass. I was living, I'm living over at the Mayapur Institute and during the rainy season I could see everything grow very quickly and they have workers come, they cut the grass, and a few weeks later it's all grown back again. It grows very fast in the rainy season. Now it doesn't grow. It's so dry now. But when it rains, it's growing. So Nanda Maharaj is telling Krishna that we worship Indra because he gives rain, and we need the grass because we have to feed the cows. Nanda Maharaj has a nice herd of cows, right? Nine lakh, 900,000. We think that one man in Delhi, oh, he's very great, he's got 50,000 cows. We think very great. Nanda Maharaj had nine lakh cows. Wonderful. So, need a lot of grass to feed so many cows. And so. He said, we have to worship Lord Indra every year. We do this. However, Lord Krishna is not very happy to see the, the, the Brijbasi people engage in, engaging in this kind of activity. So Lord Krishna began to speak uh, different philosophies, I think. There's something like six different philosophies explained in the course of Lord Krishna changing the mind of Nanda Maharaj from worshipping Indra to worshipping the Govardhan hill. So Krishna explained to Nanda Maharaj that one of the philosophies which he explained anyway was Karma Mimamsa 
philosophy expounded by Jaimini, the principle of simply work, do the work. If you do your work, then everything will be good. You'll get good results. You don't have to worry. Just do your work. Work is worship, some people say, right? So, so of course, this is a bogus philosophy. And Srila Prabhupada gives a couple of examples to refute this philosophy. He says, for example, you may be sick and you go to the doctor and you get the best doctor and he gives you the best medicine, but still he cannot cure, he does not cure. Because the medicine and the doctor are not supreme. They don't guarantee that you have to, that you'll naturally be successful, that you'll get cured. Uh, that's one example. The other example Prabhupada gives is a mother and father may take great care to raise their child and they will do everything they can that they want their child to be very nice and very good but still the child may become maybe very bad may be very fallen sinful may have very bad qualities the mother and father tried everything they did everything possibly could the mother and father could do they did it but still the child may grow up to have bad qualities. So that shows that simply work in itself is not supreme. There's a higher force. Solar Krishna explained this philosophy, he explained the modes are more powerful, that the modes are supreme, and he explained the importance of duty, simply do your duty one after another and gradually, you know, Nanda Maharaj is saying, well, well, okay, you know, let's do both. Lord Krishna was saying, we are Vaishyas, we depend on, we don't depend on Indra. Indra's rain falls on the sea. There's so much water in the sea. They don't do any worship of Indra, but still it rains on the sea. So you don't need to worship Indra to get rain. You just simply have to do your work. What we should do, Lord Krishna tells Nanda Maharaj, we should worship the cows and the brahmanas, who are the representatives of the Lord, and Govardhan Hill. This hill, Govardhan Hill. We should worship the Govardhan Hill. So Nanda Maharaj said, well, we can do both. We'll do both. We'll worship Indra and we'll do the Govardhan Puja also. But Krishna, no, no, Father. That, that there's not enough time. We need to worship Govardhan Hill only. You don't need to worship Indra. We'll need everything which you've prepared for Indra and more to worship Govardhan Hill. So you cannot waste time in just simply this foolish, this worship of Indra. Of course, Lord Krishna has many purposes in arranging for this wonderful Govardhan Lila. One of his purposes is to uh, take away the pride of Indra, because Indra, as the king of heaven, had become very proud and arrogant, and he was thinking, he had a right to this worship, even to the extent that the Bridgebasi people, who are all Nitya Siddha devotees, who've come from the spiritual world to take part in Krishna's pastimes, he thought they should also be worshipping, Indra thought they should also be worshipping him. He did not understand, or he had forgotten the position of Lord Krishna and he could not recognize the eternal associates of Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna, he doesn't like to see his devotees become proud and he arranges the situation to take away their pride. 
And so Lord Krishna was arranging that Brijbasi people will worship the Govardhan hill and offer everything to, Lord, to Govardhan. And Lord Krishna told exactly what he wanted offered. He wanted all different types of foodstuffs to, pre to be prepared. There should be fried foods, there should be cooked foods, there should be roasted, there should be boiled, there should be sweet, there should be sour, there should be salty preparations. All the milk products will have to be used. All the milk products will be used to make things like sweet rice, and rubbery, and kheer, and rasgullas, and sandesh, and gul so many, you know, you know, you all know the names, right? <laughs> so, all of these things, they have to be prepared and offered to go for done. And they prepared big quantities. And then they arranged to offer everything to go for done. And Lord Krishna himself assumed the form of Govardhan. And Govardhan appeared and he began to accept all the offerings. And he was eating and eating. And they were, ha they were having to bring more, bring more. Of course, the village is there. As you go around Govardhan, the village is there called Ani Or. Ani Or means bring more, bring more. So they were bringing big buckets, buckets of rasgullas and buckets of samosas and big buckets of kachoris and paneer sabji and you know all the names, right? Dahiwada, <laughs> uh, right? <laughs> Favorite in Mayapur. So all these things, they were bringing big quantities and Govardhan was taking it all and enjoying and they were saying, bring more, bring more. Then they were worried that, oh, you know, we've given everything, he's eaten everything, and he's still not satisfied. But then they remembered, oh, we, we have to put tosi. And as soon as they put some tosi leaves there, then immediately, <coughs> the, the belch sound, right? When you belch, that means, satisfied, you've had enough, you don't need to take more. So Govardhan was satisfied. Oh, when Govardhan appeared though, very nice pastime, we see that Lord Krishna tells all the Brijbasi people, we have to respect Govardhan, we should bow down and offer our obeisances. So Lord Krishna is offering obeisances to himself because he has appeared as the personality of Govardhan and at the same time he's appearing as the son of Nanda Maharaj so he bows down, he shows the Brijbasi people how to respect Govardhan by offering their obeisances to Govardhan. And of course the, the people of Govardhan, the people of Vrindavan, they're very happy because the personality of Govardhan has appeared to all of them. They said, we worshipped Indra for years. We've been worshipping Indra for years. He never, he never came once. He never appeared once to accept our offerings. But we've been worshipping every year. He never once came. We worship Govardhan the first time. And he's immediately come and he's giving us blessings. So they were very happy to see the personality of Govardhan that he could appear and accept their offerings. So, the, the, the personality of Govardhan is Lord Krishna himself. And uh, in Srimad Bhagavatam, it's mentioned that he is, uh, that he has this form, this, uh, I've, I've forgotten the name now, but the, the nature of this personality of Govardhan is that he can take any form he wants. And Lord Krishna instructed the people of Vrindavan that do not neglect to worship Govardhan because this Govardhan 
can take any form he wants. And he can take forms like snakes, or wild animals, or rocks which may fall from the Govardhan hill. He can take these different forms just to rectify the mentality of people who do not worship Govardhan Hill. I remember when I, I was not in the movement very long, somehow they put me in charge of the treasury, the treasury in the temple in London. And you know, we were, we were very poor. We didn't have much money at all. It was 1971. And we lived from day to day. We were always in debt, no money. And I was the treasurer. <laughs> you know? So, so Mundakini, I don't know, maybe you know Mundakini. She's quite famous because she was the lady who Prabhupada sent to Russia. To, so she was the Pujari. And she came to me, give money. <laughs> You know, and I'm the treasurer. I say, look, you know, we have so many debts, you know, how we can have this festival for Govardhan Puja? And then she told me, she said, if you don't give the money for the Govardhan Puja, you'll be bitten by the snakes on Govardhan Hill. <laughs> Ooh. And she showed me, it's in the Krishna book, it's in the Krishna book, Prabhupada said, if you neglect the worship of Govardhan Hill, you can be bitten by the snakes on Govardhan Hill. And Srimad Bhagavatam describes that Govardhan himself can take the form of these elements, poison snakes, wild animals, or falling rocks, just to get that person who neglects to worship Govardhan Hill. So very important festival. Uh, Govardhan was properly worshipped and the people are very happy. All the devotees are very happy. And, but Indra is furious. Indra is wild with rage that this boy Krishna, he's so talkative, he thinks he's, he's so ignorant, he's so foolish, he doesn't know, he, he, was, he was thinking he was insulting Lord Krishna, but actually his words were a glorification of Lord Krishna. Mother Saraswati sometimes arranges like that, when somebody tries to say something bad about them, they're actually saying something good about them. They, because uh, Indra was saying this child Krishna is Ajnana. But Ajnana means he doesn't need to know anything more. Not that he's ignorant, but it me means he doesn't need to know anything more because he already knows everything. So you know, he doesn't need to know anything more. If you know everything, you don't need to know anything more. So this is one... The, the other meaning of Ajnana. And he's also, dis it's also described that he's, he's the lowest, but he's actually above everyone. The, the Sanskrit word means that he is, it can also mean that the one who's above everyone. So the words of Indra, Indra was thinking he was insulting, but he's actually glorifying Lord Krishna. Anyway, Indra is really angry and he orders his Samvartaka clouds to go and inundate Vrindavan. And the Samvartaka clouds are usually meant only at the time of the annihilation of the universe. At the time of the end of the universe, they will come and inundate the planet. But Indra orders them, go to Vrindavan, inundate Vrindavan and destroy all these Bridgebasi people and all their animals. He said, they've become proud. Indra was saying, these people of Vrindavan, they've become proud because of their opulence. At least he, he understood their opulence. They're, really, we go to Vrindavan, we think, oh, Bridgebasi people are very poor. 
but at least Indra knew is that these people are puffed up because of their opulence. The, bridge, the village people, Vrindavan people, they're the most opulent. They have the greatest wealth in the form of cows. So Indra ordered Samvartaka clouds to go there and inundate Vrindavan. And when the clouds, and Indra said, I'm also coming, I'm come on Airavrata, because the clouds are a bit hesitant to go. This is unusual, we never did this before. You know, it's unusual, this is not really the time of our work. But Indra said, I'm also coming, I'll come on my Airavrata elephant. And the clouds go there, and they come over Vrindavan, and the whole Vrindavan becomes dark. And this terrible cold wind begins to blow, and then I see hailstones falling from the sky. The hailstones are the size of cricket balls falling from the sky. You know, so terrible, frightening situation. So the people of Vrindavan what do they do when they're in that kind of situation? There's only one thing they can do. They go to Lord Krishna and they pray to Lord Krishna. That, oh Lord Krishna, please, you save, our, save the cows. The cows are in danger. And, and if you can also save us also, that would be very nice. So the Lord Krishna remembers his vow, the great vow of Lord Krishna, which is that he will protect his devotees. Lord Krishna must protect his devotees. Whenever they're in any difficulty or danger, the Lord is there. He wants to give shelter to his devotees. So, this is actually the great vow of Lord Krishna, that he will always protect his devotees. So the devotees have come and the cows are in danger. So Lord Krishna picks up the Govardhan hill. And he picks up the Govardhan hill and he calls all the people, come under the hill, take shelter here. Come under this Govardhan hill and take shelter from this rain, from this frightful situation. So this, this uh, picking up of the Govardhan Hill is another special arrangement of Lord Krishna so that he can have the opportunity to be with all of his devotees. Because Lord Krishna is a cowherd boy and he would go out every day in the fields with the cowherd boys. So the cowherd boys, they could be with Krishna, but the gopis, they never got the chance to be with Krishna because Krishna is out in the fields all day and he only comes back at night. So the gopis were always thinking, when are we going to get a chance to be with Krishna? Because Vrindavan, 5,000 years ago, is very conservative. And the young girls cannot talk to the young boys. Right? Segregation. So the Krishna arranges picking up Govardhan Hill. And in this way, the gopis can look at Krishna uninterrupted for seven days and seven nights. Of course, there were some problems. The gopis, they told Radharani, you know, while Krishna was holding up the Govardhan hill, they said to Radharani, you should not look so intently on Lord Krishna. You will make him nervous and he may drop the Govardhan hill. And you've got Madhu Mangal. Madhu Mangal is Krishna's Brahmana friend. So he sees Lord Krishna pick up Govardhan Hill. So he says, oh, I have to help him. I will chant some mantras to give him strength so he can pick up, so he can hold the hill longer. So Madhu Mangal begins to chant mantras, thinking by my mantras, I'm giving him the strength to hold up the Govardhan Hill. And Nanda Maharaj and all the other cowherd men, they, you know, they have their sticks. You know, in Vrindavan you notice a lot of people, they always have sticks. Because the monkeys often come, you need a stick, you know. 
And sometimes, you know, you deal with the cows, the cows are a bit stubborn, you have to whack them with the stick. So the cowherd men, they always carry their sticks with them. So they use their stick to hold up the Govardhan hill. They say, Krishna may get tired, we better help him. All of us put our sticks up and hold up the hill. And then also, uh, Lord Krishna, he's holding up the hill with that one little finger. So Mother Yashoda is thinking, Oh, my poor son, his arm must get sore because he's holding up the hill for so long. We better give him a massage. So the different gopis, Mother Yashoda and other ladies, they came and they began to massage Krishna because they're worried that he may get, you know, may get cramp or pins and needles. You hold your hand up too long. They were worried about Krishna. We'll give him a massage, we'll make it comfortable for him. At one point, Krishna took his right arm and began to play the flute. But Madhu Mangal said, No, no, don't play the flute. If you play the flute, Govardhan Hill will melt. And if Govardhan Hill melts, we'll all be in trouble. We'll all be under the reign of Indra. So he wouldn't let Krishna play his flute while he's holding the Govardhan Hill. So for seven days and nights, Indra's Samvartaka clouds poured down rain and wind. They hurled everything they could. They couldn't make any impact on the Govardhan Hill at all. Govardhan Hill is described in the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the songs by the gopis. The gopis chant, chanted that of all the devotees of Lord Hari, this Govardhan Hill is the very best. Right? How does it go? Hantrayi and Adari Hari Dasabarya Yadrama Krishna, like this. When Lord Chaitanya was circumambulating Govardhan Hill, he recited this verse again and again. That of all the devotees of all, there are many devotees of Lord Hari, like Maharaj Yudhisthira, he's described as Hari Das. And Prahlad Maharaj, he's also described as Hari Das. But Govardhan Hill is Hari Dasa Varya, the very best of all the devotees of Lord Hari. Why is he the very best? Because he does so much wonderful service for all the devotees. He provides water. In the times of Lord Krishna, in the time of Lord Krishna, there were waterfalls on Govardhan Hill. Fresh, clear, crystal clear water. And water is very necessary for the cows. And the cowherd boys also would drink the water. Very nice water in the Govardhan Hill from the waterfalls there. And then also Govardhan Hill provides flowers and fruits and vegetables as well as grass. So the cows would enjoy to graze there. So many nice things. On Govardhan Hill there are also caves. The caves are very nice for the pastimes of Lord Krishna. Not only can they take shelter from the heat or from the rain, but Lord Krishna can also have his pastimes with his devotees there in the caves. The stones of Govardhan Hill are very special. It is said that during the hot summer, the stones of Govardhan will be cool on the feet. You go on the sand, it's very hot. But you go on the stones of Govardhan, they're cool. And in the winter, when everything is cold, the stones of Govardhan are warm. This is the nature of Govardhan, how he is such a wonderful devotee. He's always thinking of the welfare of the devotees and the pleasure of Lord Krishna. So providing 
facilities for Lord Krishna and all of his devotees to have their pastimes. And the most famous of all the pastimes is Krishna holding up the Govardhan hill and giving shelter to all the devotees and Lord Krishna himself is under there. So after seven days then Indra is finished. He cannot, the clouds are exhausted, the whole thing is a failure. So Indra sends the clouds back and they're all, under, Lord Indra has began to understand something of the position of Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna can replace the hill, he tells all the people and get all the cows and everything come out, puts the Govardhan hill back in position. And then Krishna's cowherd boyfriends, they joke with Krishna and they say to Krishna, you know Krishna, you didn't pick up that hill. Don't fool yourself. Don't think you're so great that you were holding up that hill. They said, you know, Govardhan Hill, he was floating because we worshipped him so nicely. We worshipped, we did the Govardhan Puja so nicely, he was so happy. Govardhan was in ecstasy, he floated. You only went under it and put your finger there and pretended you were holding it up. Don't cheat us, Krishna. We know what's the facts. So this is a loving dealings between Krishna and the cowherd boys. They're enjoying this loving exchange. So Indra has been humbled. His pride has been reduced. He understands something of the position of the Supreme Lord Krishna. And he understands he's, you know, done a great offense. So he thinks what to do. So he gets the instruction that uh, if you take Surabi, go with Surabi, if you just go on your own, Krishna may just ignore you, he may have nothing to do with you, he may not want to see you. But if you go with Surabi, then Krishna may pay attention to you. So that one place is there, uh, Govinda Kunj, is it? Around Govardhan, there's a place where Surabi does the Abhishek of Lord Krishna. And, huh? Govinda Kunj, yeah. Okay. So, uh, Surabi did the Abhishek of Lord Krishna and Lord Indra also performed Abhishek of Lord Krishna and Indra apologizes for his offenses. We were discussing earlier who is, whose offense was greater, Brahma or Indra? So I, we were discussing this with Janani Vas and Rajendra Nandana Prabhu. When he was here, we were talking about who, because we were doing Brahma Vimohan Leela at that time in the Bhagavatam. So Rajendra Nandana Prabhu pointed out, he said, actually, the, the offense of Brahma was greater than the offense of Indra. I was surprised. I thought, well, well look, come on, Indra is trying to kill everybody, you know. He wants to wipe out everyone, wants to kill all the people of Vrindavan and all the cows. But he says, Rajendra Nandana Prabhu says, he said, well, Brahma's offense was greater because he took away the devotees from Lord Krishna. Indra's offense wasn't so bad because Krishna was able to have the association of all of his devotees. I was explaining for seven days and nights the devotees could be there with Krishna and the gopis could be enjoying the beautiful face of Lord Krishna to their heart's content the, nobody could tell them, oh, don't look at Krishna, come on, you're just a young girl, don't be, don't be putting your eyes on Krishna like that. No, it's a special situation. Everyone was looking at Krishna and they were all thinking how wonderful Krishna is. 
So there was no harm, no fault on the part of the gopis to be looking at Krishna. But with Brahma's Leela, he took away the cows and the cowherd boys from Krishna. He separated them. So, and you'll see also if you look in the Srimad Bhagavatam 10th canto that when Brahma comes to offer prayers, Lord Krishna doesn't say anything. He doesn't, doesn't respond at all. But when Indra came to offer prayers, Krishna said, you know, he kind of, okay, you know, be careful, you know. <laughs> in future, in future, you know, don't get too puffed up again, you know. <laughs> so, so the, the many purposes are served by this wonderful Leela that Lord Krishna is able to enjoy with all of his devotees. And as well as that, creates this wonderful festival for all of us every year that we can have also the nice festival of Govardhan Puja every year. And it's certainly it's one of the major attractions for the devotees. Everyone likes to take part in the Govardhan Puja. One reason, of course, there's no fasting on Govardhan Puja, right? <laughs> That's a good reason. We can enjoy and we have very nice opulent prasadam. At least there should be. Mm. Okay. So, any questions, comments? Prabhu? Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you very much for your class. Uh, when Krishna stop uh, or convince Vrajavasis to not worship Indra, but how did he convince them that we should worship Govardhan? Did he put any uh, philosophy or any logic, any argument that, so that they got convinced that they should worship Govardhan? Mm -hmm. Well, the main point is, he, he, he asked uh, Lord Krishna encouraged them to worship Govardhan because Govardhan it was providing so many things for the cows. The water, I said the water, the grass, so many different vegetables and roots and herbs are growing there on the Govardhan hill and they're very much appreciated by the cows as well. So the Govardhan hill was very much important for the cows that they can graze there and at the same time they can satisfy their themselves eating the grasses and different herbs which grow there. So Lord Krishna told Nanda Maharaj, reminded Nanda Maharaj, that this Govardhan hill is performing very nice service for all of us, that we have many cows, all these cows to be maintained, and how could we ever do it without the Govardhan hill? Because she's giving so many nice facilities for our cows. So we should show our appreciation by worshipping the Govardhan hill. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, Maharaji? Did I give the money? <laughs> well, we didn't have much money to give, but <laughs> whatever we had, we gave, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we should give. We we'll have to celebrate Govardhan Puja, very important. Prabhupada taught us there will be no scarcity in Krishna Khan. Krishna provides. The more we give for Krishna, the more Krishna provides. We don't have to worry that, oh, we have no money for Govardhan Puja. No, whatever we have, we spend it for, for Krishna. And if we give for Krishna, then certainly we'll come back many times. That point is made when, when the fruit vendor comes to Nanda Maharaji's house, the lady's bringing fruits and offering to Krishna, and baby Krishna comes with a few grains of rice in his hand. And so the fruit vendor gave a big armful of fruits, although baby Krishna only had a few grains, but she didn't think, oh, he's only giving a few grains. She, she was so happy, she gave many fruits to Krishna, 
and all those grains which Krishna gave, they all transformed into jewels. So Prabhupada explains there that when we give to Krishna, Krishna will give back millions of times, whatever we give to Krishna. So we should always be eager to give to Krishna. Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai.